Okay, hello and welcome. Nice to have you here early, it's early in the morning. And as we have learned from the media, there are no indications whatsoever for broad scale surveillance. So we looked at a few press releases and public statements. And we'd like to open with a statement just so everybody knows what crowd you're, you're mingled with here. So according to a former Minister of Agriculture, the CCC, the CCC didn't actually um, help uncover everything, just and then the chaos in the name. Also, this mixture of anti-Americanism and naivety uh, really annoys him. And it's culminated in him stating that we have a super Grundrecht, a um, super basic law, which we didn't find in any of publications. And the Library of Congress has the Constitution of the USA, which also doesn't contain anything like that. Okay, so maybe things are just different in Bavaria. And of course, he also made a statement on television and listened closely. So everybody says we prevented terrorist attacks. And you were talking about five terrorist attacks. And then your speaker said, well, it's kind of hard to put a number on it. And then he answered that, well, it's kind of hard to count the number of terrorist attacks that didn't occur, but we prevented 25 in Europe and five in Germany, according to the NSA. So here's the transcript. So the question is, how many terrorist plots were prevented? And the answer is, well, it's r relatively hard to tell. And then, but you said five. And then he says, well, we are 25 in Europe, five in Germany uh, because of prison. So when the Amer Americans say, well, we had five cases where the, that we discovered to, due to the prison program, um, then we just accept it. But it might have been more, it might have been fewer. So Rick Falkwinger, unrelated to Friedrich, said, I don't think the prospect of looking like fools is going to scare many politicians, though. They're kind of used to doing that. So that fits. So maybe it was like five or something, um, I don't know. So let me tell you something about Bayes' theorem and the Bayes rate fallacy. So usually argument goes like this. We prevented one terrorist plot, but if you actually turn around, look at the entire population, then the probability that that an um, that a suspicion leads to finding a terrorist multiplied with the probability that somebody is a terrorist in the first place based on the probability that some suspicion some flag is raised, yields the probability of somebody being a terrorist assuming that he raised a flag. So if you look at that, let's stick with the number five, although sometimes they said seven. Um, he was quoted with seven, but uh, whatever, we just stick with five. 
We also assume that once the attackers were stopped, they would um, not perpetrate any other terrorist plots, which seems to be a safe assumption with suicide attackers. And we also assume that if police catch somebody, they will actually lock them away, so they cannot plan any other attacks. We also assume that all attacks that they found out about, they actually prevented, so we're making it really easy on them. We don't know the time frame of this, so let's just say there were five up to seven since the start of prison programs, so since 2001, which is when the world um, completely changed. So we also know there were fewer than 10 successful attacks. And we assume that all the successful ones were not recognized in advance, because otherwise they could have been prevented. So, optimistic calculation. We know that something is always triggering, some flags always being raised, so that probability is 1. There were 17 total attacks, divided by 80 million Germans. So the probability of somebody being a terrorist is... 2.1 raised to the power of minus 7. And the probability of the markers being correct is also 1. So if we multiply that, the probability of any person determined by the systems is a terrorist is 2 times 10 raised to the power of minus 7. So that's about 16 people in all of Germany, maybe 17. And only one of those is a terrorist and the others aren't. Just a quick bag of the envelope calculation. So now I've found a bunch of people who aren't terrorists and one who might be. So the circular reasoning goes, of course there's one I might identify but it's still a needle in a haystack problem. So I identify n terrorist plots, which is n larger than zero. So of course I need to save more data, I need to store more data. And this thinking completely ignores the false positives. And these are the people that are not presumed innocent and to proven guilty and then they have to argue, oh, but, but I wasn't even on the internet that day. And if you just continue doing this over and over and you keep ignoring the false positives, then you will reach 100% saturation sooner or later. So, of course, in the end, we kind of have to censor ourselves all the time, which would be the conclusion of this um, strategy. So, there was also someone else who uh, recognized this problem. There are three points Sasha Lobo made. Um, the construction of causalities, um, his first point, just because there's a correlation doesn't mean there's causality. Um, these causalities are created by the secret services, and the legitimization the post uh, the legitimization of the acts after they had already happened. And there's also um, a devilish, cir uh, devilish circle of reasoning where you pretty much ignore um, the problems and the opportunity costs you have of all, ba basically based on all the systems, um, if you just have this one uh, terrorist plot that you can prevent. And now Maha is talking to you about how you can actually uh, linguistically nicely present this. So in the beginning of um, July, the government finally uh, assumed that it was necessary to say something about the Snowden revelations. And it was interesting that they were all agree they all agreed on what needed to be said. 
that wasn't necessarily a conspiracy, but after the official speaker of the government had said something, everyone else can also agree on this and also keep repeating this. One of the two ways, one of the two things will happen. So, um, one of the first people who said this was Estevela, our um, foreign minister, said that surveillance is unacceptable, but the most important sentence is from the speaker of our government, and we will listen to this now. The, the BND um, cooperates uh, with foreign intelligence services and f has done so for centuries with the NSA, especially uh, for um, saving the, protecting the population from terrorist attacks. And this cooperation happens according to law and is being controlled and checked on by the by par parliamentary, by parliamentary uh, gremium. If these measures uh, the media are talking about now, the, these measures the NSA has supposedly used, if these are actually proportionate, it's now something that we have to decide upon um, in the talks that are to happen now. So we have two important, sen two important words, um, basically uh, strictly according to law, um, the cooperation, and uh, all these accusations of the NSA are all supposedly the NSA has, well, the NSA has supposedly spied on uh, German citizens. Well, only supposedly, but they still do so according to the law. So this whole argumentation is put in question, but it's happening according to the law. So they're kind of admitting um, that this has actually happened. So this whole strategy of falsifying the information and the accusations that is there, and but still it's happening to according to the law. This is kind of his strategy. Then the second sentence: the the surveillance of friends is unacceptable. We're not in times of the Cold War anymore, and the federal government is working towards uh, completely uncovering all these things that have happened, and also to uh, they're also working towards um, a united uh, reaction of the European Union. Suddenly, he's using normal language. Um, this whole surveillance, this just simply can't happen. So surveillance among friends, you can't do that. That's also what the chancellor finally said. So we have to see what transparency we need. We're kind of in between, well, both the United States and Europe, we have the same obstacles and the same problems to solve. But if we have this cooperation, it can only be built on trust among partners. So of because of that, surveillance among partners and spying on your partners and your friends, that's completely impossible. And I'm also standing in for this to protect all citizens in Germany. So that's what she said. What she, well, so sp uh, spying on your friends, that's impossible. You can't do that. So then it took her a month, or took them a m took them a month when uh, Pofala officially uh, f terminated the NSA affair. We'll quickly look at this, and also uh, look at the people in the background. You might notice one of them. So the NSA and uh, the GCHQ. British Secret Service have both declared that within Germany they act according to German law. The BND, the German Secret Service and the Institution for the S Protection of the Constitution are doing the same. And because of this professional uh, cooperation among all of these services uh, at terrorist attacks on German and American soldiers in Afghanistan can to a massive extent uh, be prevented. So the guy who's hiding behind Befala, that's Ul, um, uh, uh, politician uh, of interior German politics, who said um, famously uh, in Parliament that uh, that not pirates and. Uh, Chaos, chaos people from the CCC are uh, ruling our country, but um, rather people who are working within, si within the security institutions.
So back to Bofala, who terminated the NSA affair. What he said right in the beginning, and the NSA and GCHQ have declared that within Germany they act according to Germany. I mean, to, to German law. That's great if they can simply declare that. And for example, someone who stole something can, can simply declare, well, I didn't steal anything. Of course, that's really uh, great for uh, the courts. And of course, everyone has seen that this is simply something you can't see, do, even the people of the the authors of the Donald Duck comics have found this out. Uh, how can you know that you can trust these companies? Well, the people from the NSA are honest, you, they have said so themselves. But l let's listen to what Pofalo has to say on top of that. But I can assure you that within the control group of the parliament, uh, I have answered all questions and have all answered all questions concerning all details. Now, the results. At the end of July and in the beginning of August, part, uh, exactly a week ago, Several talks with the high-ranked officials in uh, London and Washington have happened. And these talks have brought additional clarity about which I will inform you soon. Now, the most important results. Firstly, the NSA has written had this issued a written dis declaration that they act accordingly to German law. <laughs> I cite an NSA paper, which we have received uh, in Washington. Quote, the NSA acts according to all treaties uh, with the German federal government or and uh, the German secret services and has also in the past also acted accordingly end of quote so now the text again so the first part um, talks with high-ranked officials so you t they talked and then there was also a written de declaration so they did not only talk but there's also this uh, as always um, I've I've highlighted um, us, which happen. It's uh, uns. It's always uh, us. It's always in blue. It's basically the secure the people who are uh, working within the security uh, institutions, and of course, again, there's this idea of law and order, which is uh, really important and which is basically the key to this whole text. The NSA declares that it's uh, that it agrees to acting accordingly to all uh, German laws that regulate the collection, the collection and processing of uh, communications within Germany. End of quote. And at the end of July, the NSA has also promised us in a written document, quote, the NSA is doing nothing to harm German interests. End of quote. That means our main grievance uh, that uh, in Germany, people, German German law has to be obeyed. This re like this idea is actually being followed by the NSA. They have promised us so not only uh, in talks but also in a written declaration. <laughs> That's al already weaker before um, something was declared and now they're also only saying that they're agreeing to doing this. So, for example, this thief we talked about earlier, he can he can say, I agree to obeying the law in Germany. Um, not only, of course, uh, talking, but also he should write probably write it down. So again, um, the words uh, us are highlighted. So again, there's something that's interesting, which is not quite logical. The NSA is not doing anything to harm German interests. That means that our main grievance or main idea that uh, German law has to be obeyed in in Germany is fulfilled. So 
But if the NSA is not doing anything to harm German interests, that doesn't have anything to do with the rule of law. It's a non sequitur. Um, one is not a conclusion from the other. Another interesting detail. Uh, in Germany, German law is being obeyed. So actually, the NSA is hardly works in Germany. They mainly have extraterritorial ter uh, areas where they can work. So apparently there, German law doesn't have to be obeyed anymore. Well, at least that's what they're saying there. But especially because he's stressing this part that German law is being obeyed in Germany. Secondly, GCHQ, the British Secret Service, also has assured us uh, in, a written and in a written way and in talks that they are going to uh, obey German laws in Germany. I cite our work. Our work is also always happens accordingly to all to the laws of both countries. End of quote. And what's important here, this declaration has been authorized personally by the British Minister of the Exterior. <laughs> What we see here, here it's even more important. We, we talked about this, it's written, and now it's also been authorized by the Minister of the Interior, Exterior. Of course, then everything has to be okay. So this is like an even, this is even higher again, this uh, whole idea of this written statement authorized by a high authority. And he also had to stress that himself by repeating it again. So, <laughs> again. Of course, our secret services are also acting accordingly to law and order. In other words, both the America, all the American, the British and the German secret services all declare that they always act accordingly to uh, according to uh, to German law and law within Germany. Again, law and order and uh, laws that are uh, in vigor so basically they're saying that laws that are not in vigor are not being obeyed and the secret services of the US uh, especially the NSA and the secret services of th uh, the UK have promised us that there will not be any broad spread uh, processing of information of German citizens S oh. so again, again they have uh, promised or they have agreed the question is whom they have promised this, maybe the Germans, maybe the government, that there's no widespread surveillance, uh, no, no widespread uh, data processing. So impor it's important here that we're talking about pro pro data processing right now and before we, ta we were talking about surveillance. German data, to be precise, German data are German data filtered out of this process in a in a process of several steps. On top of that, the information gained by the BND are being controlled by um, uh, someone instituted by the G10 who's who could work as a judge. So the complete espionage and the to total surveillance of the German citizens um, is doesn't exist. There is no widespread surveillance and violation of basic rights, which has been claimed repeatedly by the media. <laughs> so German data, which is this is really important. German they filter out German data, but by saying this, they're actually admitting that they're collecting this data because if you don't collect any data, you can't filter any anything out. This whole thing about a process with several steps that sounds important and. And on top of that, there is this guy who has been uh, instituted by the G10 law, who is supposed to control the secret services, who can work as a judge. Th this means that he has completed um, his law studies. So he's not a judge, he simply completed his law studies. So all of this is all, again, really foggy, really unclear. Again, the accusation of the supposed complete surveillance is based on the declarations of the NSA, the GCHQ, and the German secret services uh, 
terminated. So again, he says it's it's not simply an accusation, it's a supposed accusation. So he still has to stress again that this is all not really something that is there. He always has to stress that this is just simply that m something that might be completely false. And of course the declarations of the NSA are all without uh, without a doubt. They're all without, yeah. What we have, there is actually a cooperation um, between serv secret services and um, the processing of certain, uh, or the analysis of certain data um, in certain cases that are important for our security. So now he says there actually is something. There is, in German he says there is one cooperation, so he stresses the singular, and also in con concrete certain uh, singul singular cases. But he doesn't say how many, how many he's talking about. So, so there might be millions. So of course they're um, f in favor of our security. So now when he says our security, he's not talking about the government, but probably about the citizens. <laughs> so what further steps is the government taking? Firstly. Within the EU, the German government is uh, pressing the creation of a data protection law. Secondly, the US have uh, offered us uh, the signing of a no spy agreement. I have thus asked the president of the Secret Service to take up this offer and start negotiations between the BND and the NSA within the, this month. The president of the BND has also has already met uh, Mr. Uh, has has already uh, written to Mr. Alexander, the man is in charge of the NSA. And I also want to interpret this offer of the Americans and this at this point. This offer could never have be made to us if the declarations of the Americans that they obey German law within Germany. This offer could never have been could have never been made if they were, were not obeying the law within Germany, within Germany's borders. So what the German government is doing, um, data protection law, what this has or data protection statute, what this has to do with the NSA, it's kind of a stretch. And secondly, the no spy agreement. Um, if you closely look at what he's saying, it's, it becomes pretty clear what he's actually talking about here. Oh no, it's not clear what he's talking about. So in the end, this amazing logic. This offer could never, never, like he stresses the never, have been made. Had the declarations of the Americans in German, obeying German law within Germany's borders, well, basically, there's a lot of negations in the sentence. So what he's saying is because they're doing this, we can conclude that there's no widespread surveillance of German citizens. This this logic is such so abductive. Well, I he probably can explain this better, but like it's completely... Uh, you basically can't uh, trust this. So what he says now, what we basically already know, law and order are, according to declarations of the GCHQ and the NSA, are being obeyed within Germany. The rights of German citizens are being protected. Of course, our secret services are also obeying the German law. And doing this, they have managed to prevent a lot of um, attacks on German and American soldiers. Finally, I would like to stress that the cooperation between all these secret services is mainly about the vital interest of our country. Our secret services work hard. Okay. So again, law and order. And also again, based on the declarations or the indications of the NSA and the GCHQ, um, our civil rights are being protected Again, law and order in green. 
and uh, many attacks in red and again um, in orange uh, the cooperation and the vital basic interest of our country and our secret services are working hard and he says a bit more about these services before he leaves our secret services are doing uh, co correct are uh, doing work that is uh, according to law and order in Germany this work ne never despite all fights ba that we have due to elections well I'm going to contribute to this work despite all uh, inter-party par uh, fractions so our secret services he's probably talking about uh, all of them, so not only the German ones, but also the American and the British ones. So this should uh, not prevent any people who are or any campaigners in the election campaigns to use these uh, accusations, but basically they should unite and still work for this vital interest they talked about earlier. So what are the um, word groups that uh, appear most of the time? So you can, I mean, basically you can have a text and then you look at uh, wor groups of words that appear in these texts. They can say basically nothing, but there's certain w groups of three words that are being repeated again and again. They may have the character of uh, basically a phrase that is being repeated again and again. So if you look, uh, if you search for th uh, three word groups that, that appear repeatedly, then you can actually find these important phrases within a text. So if you look at uh, Pofala's speech, you can actually find, um, get some nice results. I did this uh, ba using a Python script. So you find three times memorandum of agreement. So what is this? This is something that should be decided and that should be signed or that is going to be signed among uh, the secret services and according to Wikipedia it's a more or less formal but at least written agreement between companies when they want to work together and is of course not legally binding um, of course neither uh, of course not based on national or international law either then there's law and order we've heard that six times that's um, his the phrase he uses most, apart from uh, soldiers, although he uh, mainly talks about male soldiers. So uh, these three phrases basically mark the whole con the content of the whole speech. So everyone's acting according to law and order um, in order to save soldiers, um, and there's going to be a memorandum of agreement, and that's why everything is okay. And concerning what he actually said content-wise, um, the NSA is, um, and the others are uh, obeying German law. The proof of this is uh, the written declaration that they're doing so and the, com the no spy agreement that is to come. So the conclusion is that there is no, so that there's no widespread surveillance. So, so the question is also what does widespread mean? So there might be surveillance, it might just not be widespread. But there is an analysis or a processing of data in certain, in concrete, certain cases. And the, this happens uh, in order to protect uh, soldiers. So you can imagine that these soldiers are um, at the Hindukush. But people are being surveilled and watched in Germany. So the soldiers uh, in, in within Germany are being protected, right? Or what is happening here? So for Pofala, the conclusion is that everything's okay, the affair is terminated, and all the accusations are basically denied and groundless. So now the question is, is this affair really terminated? So, yes, it's over, and I feel much better already. What I just noticed... Um, I also feel lots better when a member of the German government uses the positive pronoun and says our citizens. That means everything is in order, right?
So what's important here is the concept of tertium no datur, so there is no third option. When either of these is true, then the other cannot be true. It's very important after the election is the cell phone of the German Chancellor. We learned that this cell phone is very important and it can never be spied upon. The logic is a little, well, illogical here. So when I have a set of communication partners and I remove one of these, namely the Chancellor, then due to network effects, it doesn't make a difference, basically. So as long as I put everybody else under surveillance, So it's of no use putting or removing any of the communication partners from this network because I still know who's calling whom if I look at the other nodes. So excluding one person is the same thing as not excluding anyone at all. And of course, looking at the press releases of the German government, you see that the German Chancellor Angela Merkel mentioned that she's expecting US um, authorities to answer questions that the German government has asked already months ago. And it seems like they're not really willing to answer these questions. But the press release continues, um, even if they're already waiting for months, they're still having high level talks. with the goal of clearing up the, the these matters. And these talks need to be continued. Of course, that that is kind of the opposite of what I said before, that they had lots of um, commitment already from the US. So this is a form of no denial, denial where they said there's that there was no bidirectional tasks tasking of the secret services to spy upon each other's citizens and that content was never never put under surveillance regarding terrorism organized crime and um, weapons exports. And this is very specific in denying that content was not logged, but they're not mentioning metadata. So they're not actually looking at the content of your message, they say that what they are admitting is that they want to create a new basis for cooperation and have a no spy agreement. So in the future they see a clear contractual basis for the cooperation of the services. Um, so clearly they want to do something, but the question is what do they want to do and what is their goal? The press release continues the next day that they want to reach an agreement and rules of cooperation. And now, of course, not spying on each other is one of the basic principles of the Five Eyes group. So if you look at it from that angle and if you wanted to And uh, you could just assume that maybe they just want to extend it to a six eyes group. So 
the World Wide Web, of course, is a living medium. And this is from the homepage of the German Chancellor. And on top you see the headline from October 24th. And on the bottom, the headline from October 25th, when building, rebuilding trust on the 24th, which basically implies that uh, trust is in ruins, was changed to trust shaken on the 25th. So we've always referred to certain timestamps and what we're talking about. A little later on November 7th, this was they reiterated and concretized their plans where they said, I believe that yada yada work between cooperation between Germany and the US be put on a new foundation and thus have the singular opportunity to regain lost trust. And of course the question here is whose trust and whom? Um, is it the trust in, in Germans? Is it the trust in this uh, NSA? Is it uh, the German government's trust in the NSA? And we don't know. So they, they keep excluding and denying several things and even more things, but the one hypothesis they haven't denied yet is the Six Eyes hypothesis, unfortunately. So, one of the things I pointed out is, and this is a, this is a great sentence, so that also in the White House there exists a situation in which the political dimension of the coverage of the last weeks and months has been recognized fully. So this is a sentence where that basically doesn't say anything about, well, we realized this was a problem, we realized that we can't go on like this, that there might be problems with this. Basically, all they're admitting is, well, we realize that the public perception is bad. And again, if there's no third option, and they say that, well, the perception is bad, they obviously seem to think that, well, the, th the actual things that happened are no problem, it's just that the public perceives them wrongly. So this is the result of a study about the TSA who got 75 billion US dollars more than last year and they improved their they, they improved the recognition rate by 45% which is of course a relative measurement so thinking back to the false positive and uh, base rate fallacy, of course it doesn't mean very much. So then they assume that a successful terrorist attack would have a economic damage of about 500 million US dollars. So simple calculation puts the break-even point at 333 successful attacks per year when compared to the cost of the TSA. And of course, well, I'm, I'm not looking at the political dimension, but I'd just like to remark that for 75 billion US dollars, you could buy lots of fire trucks and internal security. But looking further, we basically get everything black and white. 
in 2012, a document was released by the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime titled The Use of the Internet for Terrorist Purposes. containing gems such as national law enforcement agencies should develop either directly with ISPs or with counterpart agencies in other countries. This is a description of the status quo. So they, they should develop with counterpart agencies clear procedures involving both formal and informal elements aimed at ensuring the earliest retention and production of internet usage data required. So it is still sticking to law and order, except informally. And they're talking about data retention. And of course, they, they're speaking about the earliest retention, so basically at the ISP level. And since Germany is one of the main sponsors of the United Nations, um, it is safe to assume that this document should have been under tables in Berlin. And if you continue reading, they're describing the current situation in the US, where a dual approach exists, where it, they get into detail about the informal process and saying if no direct relationship with the ISP exists, the services can make an informal request to the FBI, which will then make the request to the ISP. And again, this is all informal. So this is the kind of framework that they think about when they say informal elements. And their recommendation is to keep building such a system. And we don't really know how or why um, anyone should be able to just put requests to the FBI, according to the UNODC plans. Because that would mean that, for example, anyone, um, any police agent in Nigeria, for example, could just call up the FBI and ask them to make a request on an ISP on their behalf. Which seems kind of counterproductive. So I might have just destroyed the official, officially declared ending of the NSA affair. But still, I wish you all a Merry Crisis and a Happy New Fear. Thank you. Um, bitte stellt euch an den Mikrofonen auf, wenn ihr Fragen habt. Gibt es aus dem Internet Fragen? Okay, dann fangen wir an. Okay, there's a question from the internet. The first one is, is there any information about the cryptographic cell phone and whether there were any, uh, any data was siphoned off from that? Well, as far as I know, there are several crypto phones. Oh, the one by the Chancellor, of the Chancellor. Well, she has a crypto phone. She has an official phone, which is the cr crypto phone. But we don't really know anything about this one. We don't know if it's been spied on. The one, the one that's been spied on is the, the other one, the one he, she uses to communicate with her party. Of course, this has to be separated. Obviously, the chancellor cannot do party politics with her, with her official phone, which is being financed by um, the taxes. So she's got these two phones. And the one which she uses to uh, talk to the other C CDU politicians, that's been spied on. And interestingly, even if uh, the content is uh, being uh, 
is, is not readable, then they can still see the metadata and see who, when, when she communicated with whom. And secondly, the narrative is really interesting. Ten, maybe six years ago, um, the media constantly talked about how, uh, how knowledgeable uh, Merkel is about technology because she always used texts to communicate with her friends. And this narrative kind of completely disappeared because in retrospect, it kind of doesn't seem that plausible anymore. And the second question had Abhi. Do you already have an update on the state of the surveillance by the uh, um originating from the American embassies, embassies in Germany? Well, we've heard that it's being stressed a lot that I within German borders, um, German law and order have are being obeyed uh, on German ground, but kind of the embassy grounds are uh, extraterritorial, so at least they can no declaration be made about what is happening um, within the grounds of the embassy. And it's the same thing with the no spy agreement Pofala talked about. The, he's just saying, he's kind of, when, when he was talking about that, he pretty much admitted that something is happening. But any new knowledge, ab uh, apart from the fact that we know there there's a technology for surveillance, we don't know anything. Same for me, why should I know about this? But I have to say, this is kind of um, a, 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 a sort of straw man in this discussion. Some people might not want to hear about this, but I mean, the the bigger part of the German population doesn't live in Germany. I mean, where can they get m most data? With a small tower within Germany, uh, in Berlin, or uh, by surveilling all German citizens' data traffic, for example, at Facebook. But for example, there's um, something that's really interesting. There's pictures on Frank Rieger's blog um, from the uh, British embassy. It isn't, there's these towers on top and it's not really pretty. And I, but yeah, I don't really know if that's actually an important topic apart from the fact that there's these, that there's these interesting denials, which uh, kind of indicate that there's been s a certain surveillance. But I also think that it's pretty much a straw man because the really what's really important here is the fact that all this data is being collected at uh, central knots in the inter internet or so yeah of course again we can say that there's no widespread surveillance because it's not widespread it's simply at uh, certain points the in the clip of our chancellor i thought it was interesting that afterwards she said that it's not just about her cell phone and that she sees it in her uh, in her domain to to tr make sure to prevent that in the future. Have you seen any other occurrences where she actually declares her responsibility for our protection? Well, I only know of this one occasion, but it's already painful to watch all of this. I cannot say, like, I cannot claim to have a complete overview of this, but uh, well, as far as I know, she recently did this um, on Phoenix in uh, the German parliament. Well, and as 80% of you have voted for her, you should be happy because she's working for your protection. Next question from the internet. How do we get beyond the linguistic analysis of government and dominance? Well, firstly, I've been saying this for years, but you have to listen closely because apparently a lot of people have not been listening closely. Of course, Pofala didn't terminate uh, the affair, which has been kind of uh, a, a phrase that has been repeated again and again by journalists, but apparently they have not been listening closely. and. This is something w where the journalist journalists have to be more critical and listen more closely. And of course, we shouldn't leave it up to uh, the journalists uh, to report about these things. We can do this ourselves, for example, by using blogs. So this change of opinion has to come from somewhere and we can incite this by uh, getting active ourselves and publishing information ourselves. I think this is, really this is a really important point here. 
well, also the media are uh, basically uh, a body of resonance. So they pretty much uh, mainly repeat what uh, the p these politicians invent. So what Maha also mentioned is the symmetry of the symmetry of this whole apparatus should be changed so that uh, all these uh, creations of the politicians are not simply being pre repeated anymore. Have you found a reason why we even need a new agreement if everything is already all fine and dandy? Because um, the way I understood it is just since they're already obeying all laws, we don't need to do anything because the affair is already over. So there's no need to have any further treaties, right? Well, yeah, exactly. There's this strategy of denial and admit. You're kind of denying that this happens, but you still kind of indirectly, implicitly admit it. This is their strategy where they show, well, we kind of, we, they know we kind of have to do anything. So they're doing this agreement simply to do something, which is kind of the proof that everything's already been, uh, everything's always been okay. So there's again this contradiction, and Kai stressed this also, where um, it's about this um, be membership in within the club, this whole six and five eyes thing. But the reason for these statements is it to create cognitive dissonance? They look clueless, uh, possibly. I c I could start a survey. Who who ca who can't listen anymore? Uh, raise your hands. I see a lot of hands here. But honestly, um, there's this practical cynicism again. I believe that uh, politics at this level are mainly driven by opportun by being opportunistic, and you can. So basically, what? well, what? logically, you're right. If you listen close, then the entire time it's horrible what they're telling us and they, they should all be out on the street it's it's unbearable you can always only try to to um, not listen to it yeah thank you for the talk um, one thing I'd like to point out is the fact that most political debates in Germany are led from the economical perspective so it's always about the money whether it's um, yeah, whether it's social services or security, it's always about jobs and economy. And the question is, if we are arguing against surveillance, shouldn't we also be focusing much more on the economic perspective? Like, for example, the the break-even analysis that was done. Um, it's not worth it. It's just money wasted. Well, of course, this break-even analysis is tricky because, I mean, if if just one person dies, isn't the isn't that worth more than any money you can have? But based on this thing, this whole Swift thing is quite interesting. Who doesn't know about this? It's too long to actually uh, talk about this in length. But there have been attempts to kind of stop doing this, um, but there have not been any results. So apparently. There have been some dynamics being incited. Some people have started saying uh, that this was enough, and they started building um, a data center. But it's it's kind of a black box. We don't really know what happened there. I'm basically I'm basically looking at this maximum likelihood point. What what do I believe is the most uh, most probable situation? So, as a network technician, uh, about 12 years ago I had my first um, DSL connection. And then I always had a trace route running and I uh, realized I was always sent over a server in Washington. So I knew from the beginning that my data always leaves German ground. So the whole thing with obeying German law is that they, well, it's kind of hard to um control where data is going anyway. So a few years ago I already knew that my data is basically always traveling internationally. Thus this whole um 
obeying laws, obeying national laws, uh, that's complete bullshit. We need international regulations. And especially in political systems that want to extend surveillance, the leaders always try to influence the public perception towards things that are not real, which is basically brainwashing the masses. Thank you. Well, I wouldn't call it brainwashing, but merely maybe suggestion. Maybe this whole idea about uh, German data is interesting as well. Um, I've got an association there. Do you guys know the uh, nuclear nucle nuclear energy filter? It's a gr <laughs> it's a great machine that actually filters the nuclear energy uh, from your electri electricity lines. Um, I think this whole thing about filtering out German data is um, interesting. Um, there's a crystal on there, and it's got like an energy field, and that's what it's based on. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I have a short question, it might be uh, like a nightmare. If you were uh, Mr. Pofala, what would you have said in his place? I personally don't know. Is he a civil, is he, he's a civil servant? Um, I, I would declare my, I, I would retreat from politics. I have no idea. Well, he kind of, he pretty much retreated from politics now, right? Well, I mean, Maha like nicely analyzed all of this and took it apart. But most people who casually watch uh, television and who then like see be this being having been cut, I mean, it's uh, it's successful and yeah. And uh, I honestly, I don't want to do something of that like this. If I would ever do, if I was ever about to do something like this, pre please, please keep me from doing this. Um, with violence, if, if for example the pirates uh, Hello, thanks for the Chancellor. I think there's uh, one thing I, I noticed when watching, it's one of the first quotes you had. Wait, they claim that the NSA that the NSA is in talks with the government but then they relativize it and say that they're actually talking to the German Secret Service so uh, that, that's I don't know, that, that kind of worries me because it seems they're treating the German Secret Service as um, a, a proxy for the, the the German government or the German population. And one of the one is executive, one of the other is legislative, and what? Yeah, nicely seen. Basically, it's basically the Secret Service is doing it amongst themselves. Well, the cognitive dissonance is built in. It comes with purchase of these things. We kind, I mean, we kind of assumed that this was known already this um, this phrase well of course yeah it's interesting well but also seeing is it it's um, it's a trend um, Ms. Merkel does a, a good risk analysis risk assessment by using two different phones for reasons of taxation um, and of course it wouldn't make it, it would be dangerous for her politically if she used the cryptographic official phone for doing party affairs no comment <laughs> so how data was filtered is something actually explained um, they look for the .de domain ending and email addresses and I'm I always kind of feel like making jokes about it but I can't even top reality anymore so they're that serious and they I also believe that, that he didn't really misp uh, misspeak when he said we are governed by security services there's a nice photo that was going through media a while back showing the heads of the office of the protection of the, for the protection of the constitution and the German secret service walking through the catacombs in Washington 
and there was no one else there of any rank in the government. So we shouldn't find this so funny. We are actually being governed by the Secret Service now. And uh, one more thing, the General Consulate of the of the United States is in Frankfurt, um, near D6. Something we shouldn't forget when we talk about surveillance in Berlin. Well, just a short answer to this. Well, the general consulate, we 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 already flew above that thing with a with a helicopter. So, um, thanks for listening in. Uh, if you want to give us any feedback, you can use our hashtag thirty C three.